Hello, my name is David Lastner. This is a tutorial series on automatic text recognition. You're watching the second video, which deals with where and how to get the images to begin with. When discovered in the digital collections of libraries or archives, for many humanities scholars, images of text sources form the basis of their academic work. Finding, creating and collecting images of textual material is often the first step in the research process. Let us show you some of the typical ways of acquiring scanned images. Archives and other memory institutions offer a wealth of material that has not yet been digitized. If you are struggling to obtain digital copies of documents you are interested in, visiting the institution and requesting digitization of specific items may be necessary. As most memory institutions slowly but surely move into the digital age, your digitization journey will usually begin in the comfort of your own home, searching through digital finding aids and preparing lists of the relevant institutions and archival material to request for digital copies. Once the archival staff has prepared the required files for you, your work of selecting relevant archival material begins. It is rare that an entire folder will be relevant to you. Here, a careful selection might save not only the time of the archivist doing the digitization, but also your wallet. Most archives and other memory institutions have clearly defined conditions under which digital copies of archival material can be provided and how they can be used. These rules may be part of a general contract between the user and the particular archive, but in the case of a larger digitization project, it might be necessary to create a separate contract with project-specific rules. Digitization of archival materials may be done directly by the user, but often the digitization is carried out by a specialized department within the archive or an external provider. In this case, the user should specify the preferred quality for the digitized material so it can fit the criteria for the subsequent ATR process. The service is usually chargeable and the final price is based on the number of items digitized. Once the digitization has been done and the results have been sent to you, your ATR journey begins. Even if visiting an archive might be a great and often joyful opportunity, sometimes sources that have entered the public domain can be found online, on the Internet Archive or Google Books. These sources consist of a collection of scans with an added layer of optical character recognition, OCR, which is, in most cases, not of any usable quality. Both types of data are combined into a PDF that can be downloaded. However, it's typically not clearly indicated what type of reuse or republication of the digital images is permitted. Instead, the scan document is preceded by a page that clearly states that the document's copyright is owned by Google. What does that mean for the source that is in the public domain? The copyright here refers to the digital object, the image of the scan, not the analog print, nor the textual content of the source. That means that if you are planning to use only the textual content of the source, there is no copyright in your way. Whenever you do need to use or republish the scans, there might still be a fairly convenient way. When Google Books accumulated the digital sources, they partnered with many cultural heritage institutions, or CHI, via individual contracts. Through several of these contracts that went public, we know that the CHI obtains a digital copy of the scan that they can distribute to researchers. So if you find a relevant PDF on Google Books of which you need the copyright situation clarified, identifying the partner institution for this particular scan from the Google Books metadata and asking for a permissive license from the CHI is a viable route. Typically, 
and should receive a response within a week. To sum up, the relevant questions that you need to ask prior to using Google Books or the Internet Archive sources are what type of data you need from the PDF, text, paratext, digital object, are you planning to research the sources or are you planning to republish the sources, for example, as part of training data for other ATR projects? Depending on your objectives, you may be satisfied with using the Google Books document directly, obtaining a permissive license from the partner CHI, or creating an envelope dataset that doesn't contain the copyrighted digital object itself, but enriches it with quality annotation such as transcriptions and only references the copyrighted digital object. With so many different stakeholders, pathways and decisions navigating the ATR process can be overwhelming. That is why there are efforts from the community to simplify interactions and workflows in the future. When you are planning to publish your research outcomes, it might be helpful to consult the Heritage Data Reuse Charter, an initiative by DARIA. The charter contains six points on which cultural heritage institutions and researchers should agree upon when working together, including the principles of reciprocity, interoperability, citability, openness, stewardship, and trustworthiness. See the video description to learn more. That was it on where and how to get images. If you want to learn more about the next steps in the ATR pipeline, watch our next video dealing with image optimization.